we have seen that a real 2x2 matrix with complex eigenvalues is always similar to a scaling rotation matrix. In this video, we will see an example where we will find this scaling rotation matrix in an explicit example. So let us take a look. So here we have our matrix A, uh, not a scaling rotation matrix yet. And the question is, find matrices P and C such that A is similar to C. So A equals P, C, P inverse. Now we had a theorem told us what to do. We had to find an eigenvalue and a corresponding eigenvector. So let us start with the eigenvalue. So P lambda, then we put a minus lambda on the diagonal. Then we compute the determinant. So 2 minus lambda times 4 minus lambda minus minus 1 times 2, so plus 2. And simplify a bit, we get a, a lambda squared. We get a minus 4 lambda minus 2 lambda minus 6 lambda and plus 8 plus 2 equals plus 10. So there we have our P lambda, which can be written as lambda minus 3 squared plus 1. We completed the square here in order to compute the eigenvalues because setting P lambda to 0, uh, we find lambda equals 3 plus or minus i. And then we have to choose one of the two. So I thought, okay, let's take the one with the plus sign. So for the remainder of this example, we will take the lambda equals 3 plus i. Now that gives me immediately my C matrix, because according to the theorem, my uh, C matrix becomes A, A, B minus B, uh, where A is the real part of lambda, 3 in this case, and B is the imaginary part of lambda, which is in this case 1. So there we have the C matrix. Then for the P matrix, we need a corresponding eigenvector. So we compute A minus lambda i here, and we have to solve A minus lambda i times V equals 0. So we compute um, the, we, uh, the, with the 3 plus i here, and we form the augmented matrix. So 2 minus 3 plus i gives me minus 1 minus i, and 4 minus 3 plus i gives me 1 minus i, and the other two remain the same. Now this complex uh, row reduction is also always a bit annoying. Uh, so what I did here is I multiplied the last row by a 1 plus i, and I multiplied the first row by a factor of 2 in order to make the, the, the first numbers, the, the, number, the numbers in the first column the same. So that's what ha it happened in this first step. So times 2 here and then times 1 plus i over here, because then they are the same. And then you see uh, that so the first uh, numbers in the first column are the same, but the number uh, apart from a sign. And in the second column as well, because we have 1 plus i times 1 minus i equals 1 minus i plus i minus r squared equals the 2. So you see that the second row drops out immediately. Well, it should. We are looking for eigen uh, factors, so we should be left with a non-trivial solution. If we would have some rubbish left, we would only have found a trivial solution. So this is a nice check whether you did your computation correctly. If you did it correctly, the second row should drop out. And there we go, C2 equal is free, and our first equation tells us minus 2 times 1 plus i times C1, minus 2 times C2 equals 0. And C2 is free. And uh, we can solve for C2 now, of course. Uh, take it to the other side and divide by 2. So you have C2 equals minus 1 plus i times C1. Now, what do we choose for C2? Convenient choices, for example, we can choose anything except for 0. A convenient choice is to choose C2 equals minus 1 minus i, because that uh, implies that C1 equals 1. So we I have a bit of an iffy choice for C2, but that makes us our C1 nice. And now we can uh, uh, form our P, because we have our V. So how do we get our P? Well, as, as, as our first column, we have the real part of V, so that's 1 minus 1. And the imaginary part of V equals 0 minus 1. But as our second column, we have minus the imaginary part of V, so we get 0, 1. So there is our uh, matrix P. Uh, now we have our C and our P 
and we have uh, a equals b c b inversion. Now one final remark, we made some choice here where we to put a plus sign for our lambda. We could also have taken lambda equals 3 minus i. Well, in that case, we would have found a slightly different v as well. We would have found a slightly different c and a slightly different b, but still you can try. Also with this b and this c, we have a equals p times c times p inverse. So the products p, c, p inverse are the same in both cases. So in problems like this, you always have a choice uh, for uh, the choice of your eigenvalue. Gives you slightly different p, slightly different c's, but this may remind you, of course, of the diagonalizations where you also have some choice which eigenvalue you put first. However, the result, both choices are correct. The results give you, in both cases, a equals p times c times p inverse.